when you look at you know the evolution of technology, um, particularly for you know solar cells uh, today, ninety five percent of the product that is made worldwide is crystalline or monocrystalline perk. When you know that four or five percent remaining is heterojunction. So heterojunction uh, uses a different wafer and it has a bit of a thin film on it. So it is, <clears throat> excuse me, an alternative technology that is progressing, you know, in a different channel that PERC has progressed. PERC eventually will become, with the addition of a thin film on it, a top con. So why are these changes uh, necessary? So over the years, we have had crystalline cells improve in efficiency and we're plateauing right so we're asymptotically coming to the maximum efficiency that this type of of wafer cell can obtain you know uh, the size of solar modules have increased to improve the productivity of the manufacturing process but the efficiency on a per square inch on a per square centimeter area has not so what are the technologies going to look like you know two years five years down the line so there's two streams <clears throat> one is the addition of a you know peroxide or, or another thin film to to perk and that is what is commonly known as topcon and the alternative to that is heterojunction so uh, um it is a you know a, a bet on uh, looking at both possible technologies and offering both and, and having the, uh, the ability to pivot in between the two. Is, is there anything different than with the scenario of, of your company now taking over the plant than, than the previous operator and the, the economics or well, why does it make sense for you? Well, you know, uh, uh, as a, as a, you know, you may have seen, I've said, and you know what everybody's saying is, you know, electrification uh, right now is unstoppable, right? So we are um, um, in an in a in an era, in an age that uh, you know uh, we see that more than fifty percent of all new power generation um, uh, is solar, in particular in the U.S., and it's happening all around the world. So more and more power generation uh, will replace all power generation with other fuels. Um, um, Helian, as part of being the engine, right, we make the product that actually generates the electricity. Um, <clears throat> we see the opportunity to grow. We see the opportunity to offer alternative products and, and, and be there for our clients as they decide you know, what is best for their rooftop what is best for their solar farm. So, so I don't know if I responded to your question. No, so. that's, no that's perfect. Um, and, and, and speaking from more of a, a macro sense then, I mean, we hear so much about the, the supply chain challenges globally um, mm -hmm. with, with many renewables, not just, you know, not just solar. Um, yeah. but, but why is it so important that the role that Helium plays in that ecosystem to bring manufacturing and, and continue to ramp up manufacturing domestically. Um, what, what does that do to those supply chain issues? So the, the many of the supply chain issues uh, are related to history and where the investment has been made. Um, <clears throat> there are you know, particular supply chain issues right now that are related to maritime freight congestion, right? Uh, uh, manufacturing locally allows us to be near the point of delivery, right? So when we manufacture a solar module in Minnesota, right, that could be in Nebraska within five, six hours or in the Northeast um, within eight, 12 hours, right? We manufacture in Florida. We are, you know, within eight hour drive for, from all the Southeast. So it is being closer to our clients. Again, you know, we're importing cells right now, like everybody else making solar models in the US. So <clears throat> the, the 
you know, Solar Energy Manufacturing for America Act that Senator Ossoff is, is, uh, has introduced in Senate brings, could, and hopefully will, bring um, uh, the necessary uh, support to allow from polysilicon to ingots to wafers or wafers that are made directly from polysilicon, um, like, you know, the cubic uh, uh, proposal um, to solar cells, to modules, you know, an, an increase in manufacturing, an increase in, in possible supply uh, in the, you know, supply demand balance uh, in the U.S. You mentioned um, and we want to be part yeah. of that, right? Yeah. You mentioned that this is a bit of a bet by by Hellion too. That I think the number you threw out was five percent slice of the pie for for HJT. Um, how how much room for growth do you see there? Is that is that a really big opportunity for your for your organization? Um, it it is because it's, it's, it's you know that is is you know the the when I refer to five percent of Okatero Junction in versus Burke is worldwide, right? Um, because the junction will grow uh, more. I mean, we see more you know, capacity coming online, but so far only in Asia. Um, uh, what I mentioned before of, you know, SEMA and the SEMA Act uh, um, that uh, the administration uh, is considering in Senate, all of those things will overall provide a more stable and long-term view uh, and support um, a view for investors, like you know, uh, uh, shareholders and and uh, um, and such, on the companies that like us operate in this market. Uh, why we go to heterojunction is because we see the residential market, particularly in the U.S., as the fastest growing market. You know, we believe in the product we make. We believe in the fact that uh, distributed generation. Um, is the key to you know, minimizing uh, uh, grid upgrades. 